My name is Erica Eiderhoven, and I'm running for state representative of the 27th Middlesex in Somerville. My life's work is centered on reclaiming our voice and agency in government. I co-founded ACT on Mass, the lead advocacy organization fighting for transparency in the Massachusetts State House, because for too long, unions, advocates, and working people have been pushed out of the political process. My advocacy work has been to support working people, find their power and voice, and exercise their power in the State House. We are living through an unprecedented crisis. COVID-19 has revealed how close to the edge many of us live and the deep inequities that pervade our society. Black and brown people are leading uprisings across the globe to call for an end to police violence and defunding the police in order to invest in community health and care. This is a moment of reckoning. It is clear our society as currently structured does not match the values many of us hold. And this is no accident. Our society has been shaped by a series of decisions made by people in power. Now is a once in a half century opportunity to make change and I am running for state representative to do just that. With me, what you see is what you get. The issues I am running on are struggles I have been on the front lines of for years. I have worked closely with unions, advocacy groups, and legislators to achieve tangible wins in the State House. And my proven track record is why I have the support of every endorsing progressive organization based in Massachusetts, from organized labor and essential workers, including AFL-CIO, the teachers unions, as well as progressive advocacy groups such as Sierra Club, Sunrise Movement, Progressive Massachusetts, and Mass Alliance. My worldview was shaped by my upbringing. I was raised by a single immigrant mom whose first job in the United States was working as a housemaid for a family in Brookline. She was fortunate to later work a union job as a flight attendant for TWA. Working a union job meant despite the long hours, she earned a living wage. It was thanks to her union that I was able to go to college and pursue my dreams. I truly am who I am because of organized labor. Now, tragically, that is not the reality for working families today. Unfortunately, my mom's union and her contract no longer exist. Since the 80s, corporations and powerful individuals have carved out the American worker, busted unions, bought our elected officials, and profited off our basic human rights, including healthcare, housing, and education, all of which exploits our racial hierarchy to continue the centuries-long oppression of people of color. This exploitation of working people is intentional. I know this because early in my career, I worked as an antitrust economist, preparing data and economic models used by the Department of Justice and the European Commission. My job was to analyze the damage corporations caused when they broke the rules of the market. Through this, it became clear to me that the system is steeply rigged in their favor and the only way to address structural injustices like low wages and inhumane contracts is through government. Unfortunately, the Massachusetts State Legislature, um, important bills to protect immigrants, stop climate change, and tackle the housing crisis have been killed year after year without a public vote. Massachusetts is one of the least transparent legislatures in the United States, and we do not know whether our elected representatives are truly fighting for us. Knowing what I knew about the power of corporations and the limited ways we as voters have to exercise our voice in government, I felt it was my duty to expose and rectify these injustices. This is why I co-founded Act on Mass, the lead organization fighting for transparency in the Massachusetts House. We work closely with state reps to obtain recorded votes while simultaneously mobilizing grassroots groups, unions, and voters to call on their state reps with clear demands on progressive policies happening in real time. Through this work, I developed a deep understanding of the dynamics and culture in the State House and how to navigate it to achieve massive progressive victories. Last fall, I worked with legislators to block a disastrous corporate tax break in the budget and I helped win 1.5 billion in funding for our public schools, particularly for low-income students. And just last month, I spearheaded a coalition that ensured recorded votes will continue to be possible so we know whether our legislators are truly representing us. I understand both how decisions are made in the legislature and how to center our community's voice in the outcome. I wanna continue this fight for, for this work fighting for a transparent and accessible state house that works for all of us. I believe every one of us has the right to a dignified life. This means that everyone's basic human needs, needs are met, including house, housing, healthcare, education, and a livable climate. And that every one of us has a voice and agency to shape our shared commonwealth. 
we have the power to take back control of our government and ensure equity and justice for all. This means fighting for a Massachusetts Green New Deal, fully funding our public schools, stopping the displacement and gentrification crisis, and ensuring none of our neighbors live in fear by protecting immigrants' rights. In terms of housing, even before COVID-19 hit, Somerville was in the midst of a massive affordable housing crisis. In the last decade, Somerville has seen the steepest increase in housing prices in all of Massachusetts, and many of our residents have already been displaced. 65% of Somerville's residents are renters, meaning the majority of our city is at the mercy of policies that undercut tenants. Now, with so many workers facing layoffs, furloughs, and pay cuts amid the pandemic, the case for affordable housing has never been stronger. I will fight for an end to the statewide ban on rent control, and I will fight for the construction of new affordable housing, not luxury condos, by local union labor, because I firmly believe that access to safe, affordable, and stable housing is a human right. The existential threat posed by the climate crisis has informed many of my legislative priorities. Our government has compromised on climate policy for decades to the point we can no longer afford incremental solutions. Scientists have given us 10 years to drastically cut car global carbon emissions in order to avoid the most catastrophic effects of climate change. I'm guided by this urgency, along with the understanding that climate justice is deeply intertwined with racial and economic justice. Despite strong support for a Green New Deal, the State House has not voted on a significant climate bill in over 12 years, and I will carry with me the fierce urgency that this crisis demands as I fight to transition our state to 100% renewable energy while ensuring that workers and communities of color lead the transition to a green economy. We need to fully fund our public schools from pre-K, K-12 to higher ed. I am proud to have attended and graduated from our public schools and proud to have worked closely with our teachers unions in the fight for equitable funding and for educators to be paid a living wage. Your zip code, race, or class should never determine the quality of your school, your class size, or the caseload for special education and English language learners. We need universal pre-K and ensure our graduates of public colleges and universities graduate debt-free, and I'm committed to continuing this fight. Finally, as a daughter of immigrants, it is deeply important to me and for our community that none of our neighbors live in fear. This means passing the Safe Communities Act and the Work and Family Mobility Act. Safety and mobility are human rights for all. I will also support Representative Denise Provo's bill, ensuring that all our students, regardless of their documentation status, have access to in-state tuition and financial aid at our public colleges and universities. I have been fighting for progressive values in the State House and our city for years, and I am proud of the spirit and dedication of our community to fight tirelessly for equity and justice. This district has a powerful history of electing progressive North Stars like Rep. Denise Provo and Senator Pat Jalen, who pushed the envelope on what is possible in the halls of power. These are big shoes to fill, and I am ready to continue their legacy. We are living in historic times. People are telling us in no uncertain terms what change they need, and it is our duty to rise to this occasion. Don't let anyone tell you a better world isn't possible. This means we need to be anti-racist, class conscious, and approach every obstacle with a lens to equity. We especially need to uplift voices, experiences, and agency of people of color and consider every decision we make. Does it uphold a system of racism or does it disrupt it? Because for too long, our political and economic system has broken the social contract and it is our duty to just restore it. To build trust between our public institutions and our communities so we can build a healthy and free world. A big loss for me through this crisis has been the separation from all of you. I normally would be knocking on your door, but instead I'll be reaching out by phone and I hope you'll answer my call so we can discuss the issues that are affecting you and your family. I will work hard to earn your vote in the Democratic primary on September 1st so I can continue our fight for justice and represent Somerville and our progressive values. Thank you.